How do I start this? Thank you, Brit. Okay, this is kind of awkward. What's up, everyone? Welcome to my YouTube channel. We are brewing an IPA today. The grain bill for this IPA is mostly two row. It's 79% two row, kind of a random number, but that's what it worked out to be. And then there's 7% each of rye, which is this darker looking grain right here, and Munich and Carafoam. I'm gonna go ahead and get this milled. grain is milled. I'll give you a close-up of what it looks like. But you can see the husk are, are mostly intact and they're cracked enough to get access to all this white sugary starch stuff is what you're getting out in the mash. As my HLT is heating up, I'm going to add my lactic acid and this is just to adjust the pH of my strike water. This little pipette is how I measure it out. I'm adding two milliliters of this. I have a total of five gallons of water in the HLT. That's my strike water that I'm preheating to 175. And then from there, I'll use this pump down here to pump my HLT water over through the rims tube, which is just another heating element. And then from the rims tube, that'll go back up to the mash tun. By the time it gets in here, it'll be 160 degrees, which is our strike temperature. And then I'll add the grains in there. It'll be 152 degrees after that. We're at 176 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my valve. Now it's gonna start flowing down there to prime that pump. And then I'm gonna kick the pump on and start pumping into the mash tun. We got all of the water in the mash tun. Now what I'm gonna do is use this pump down here to recirculate through the rims to open this up just to purge the air out of the pump. And then I'm gonna turn on my pump to start recirculating. And I'll run this just for a few more minutes just to finish preheating everything. Make sure my temperature is stable in the mash tun before I dough in. The mash tun is at temperatures 160 degrees. Now I'm going to dough in. I like to mix this just a little bit at a time. Stir it up, make sure everything gets fully saturated and get out all of the little dough balls that sometimes form. All right, it's looking pretty good. Been 10 minutes, so I'm just gonna get a little sample so I can check the pH, make sure we're in a good place. For the mash samples, I'll pour it in this little cup and then stick this cup in this little bath of ice water just to cool that down, get that to about room temperature so I can measure it with my meter. Okay, now that the mash sample is cooled down, I'm gonna check the pH. 5.26, so I'm gonna write that down in my notes. Now that we have a nice grain bed formed in the mash tun, I'm gonna turn off the pump temporarily, then throw in my recirc manifold. And we'll let this go for about another 35 minutes. While the mash is finishing up, I'm going to preheat my HLT for the sparge water. I'm gonna add a little bit more lactic acid, just one milliliter this time. And I'm gonna again measure the pH of this before it gets heated up. 3.55. It's been about 50 minutes on the mash. I'm now gonna get this ready to water. So I'm gonna bump this up to 168. Reach in here and check this out. And we're at about 169 degrees. So I'm going to close my recirc and start opening up the whirlpool valve to start lottering over into the boil kettle. And that's about how slow I lotter, just to make sure I get a really good efficiency on my transfer. I like to keep the fluid level just about an inch above the grain bed. Almost there, got a little over six gallons. We're shooting for eight and a half. Okay, we're at full volume. Let's take a look. And we're right about 10.50. I'm not even sure what we should be at. Let me go check. Actually, we should have hit 1048, so we're a little better than we expected. We're almost getting to the hot break. So this is the anti-foam agent that I typically use. This is just from more beer. A little mosaic for the boil. So we're done with the boil. I'm going to start whirlpooling to sanitize my knockout path. My Whirlpool Hop Edition, I'm going to do at 180. So I'm gonna bring this temperature down. For the final Hop Edition, we're adding some more mosaic. This is going into the Whirlpool at 180 degrees for 20 minutes. I just pulled my hop bag out of boiling water. So I'm gonna add the hops to the bag. Insert that into the Whirlpool like this. Just tie it to the back handle here. It's been 20 minutes. Just gonna pull out the hop bag. Drain that out a little bit. As I wait for the whirlpool to settle down, I'm going to hook up my plate chiller. 
To cool down the wort after the boil, I use a Duda Diesel B336, the 20 plate. So I come out of the boil kettle over to this pump down here, up through the tree. From the tree, I go up through this line into my inline filter and then through the plate chiller down into this T. And that just goes directly to the unit tank and I have a gauge on here just to monitor temperature. So I'll collect the used water. It just goes through the chiller. I just collect that in a bucket and throw it in a little laundry. So uh, outbound side in there. I got this valve open. Let me go turn on the water. And then I will close up my Whirlpool valve. Slightly open up the knockout valve. And then kick on the pump. We're at 78 degrees. I'm connecting the glycol to finish cooling this down to 65 degrees. Let's stick in the temperature probe. I'll connect my oxygen to the carb stone to oxygenate. And I'll set the rotometer to one liter a minute for one minute. It's been about 15 minutes. I'm taking a sample to check the oxygen concentration. For most beers, I'll do about 10 to 15 ppm of oxygen. Now that the wort has cooled down and been oxygenated, it's time to add the yeast. Nice and sanitized. I'll first take a gravity sample. We're at about 1065. The final step is to add the yeast. I'm gonna add two packs of London L3. And in about three to four weeks, we'll have a fresh American IPA. Okay, brew day is over. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about my brewing process. Cheers.